I'd like to talk about something that's prevalent today and actually quite disturbing, and that's suicide, especially among our youth. There are so many youths in this day that have been deciding that death is better than life and are committing suicide for many different reasons. Articles I've read put suicide as the number two death rate among our youth. The reason a person comes to this decision is understandable, but to choose death over life will not give you a better life. I've been to that place myself where death seemed like the greatest idea I ever had. I'm so glad that I chose life over death, and I hope this testimony I have will encourage someone else to choose life just as I did. It was 1967 when I was about 20 years old, uh, not far away from being 21. I was in the Army stationed at Fort MacArthur in San Pedro, and there was a young soldier there who was about my age, and he'd attempted to jump off the Vincent Thomas Bridge. I remember saying to myself, why would anybody want to kill himself? I mean, I didn't like army life. I wasn't someone who liked being told what to do, and I'd caused myself a lot of trouble because of my attitude. But the bottom line, I only had two years to do, and at this time, I only had about six months left to go. So why would someone try to kill himself? Well, let's fast forward to about 1971. I'd worked uh, in a few jobs. I worked at shipyards, some, uh, worked in an office for a while. I was uh, working structural steel for a little while, but I came to the place where I decided that working as a ship fitter is where I fit best. But I had a problem. I'd uh, taken a lot of drugs in those years, and I wasn't able to work at this particular point. I was now unemployed, and I could hardly carry a conversation anymore. I was at the point in my life where I had taken one too many bad trips on psychedelic drugs. My life consisted mostly of keeping myself from running up and down the street, screaming like a raving maniac. I knew that wouldn't help anything. One thing I knew is that no psychiatrist or mental health counselor could help. I already knew exactly what was wrong with me and exactly exactly what pills I could take to calm the torment. Oddly enough, I didn't want to live the rest of my life depending on drugs to keep me normalized. I'd barely survived my last overdose on mescaline. It had fried my brain, and here I was, the man who others came to for help to get their lives back on track after they'd had some bad trips, and I couldn't help myself. I was done with drugs. I just wanted to live. And I picked up a side painting job uh, in an apartment, as, as, and as I was painting, I pondered, uh, what can I do with this life I have? I came to the conclusion, though, that uh, it wasn't very good. Uh, there wasn't much hope for it. And maybe suicide is the answer. I thought of that soldier that was going to jump off the Vincent Thomas Bridge, and I said, well, maybe he had the right idea. Maybe I should be the one jumping off that bridge. And when I thought about it, I, the more I thought about it, the more it sounded like the greatest idea I'd ever had. I thought, since the end of life is death, what have I got to lose by getting there early? And I was actually laughing. I was thinking, all these stupid people are going to live this whole life through all this misery and toil and strife. And... Uh, well, I was going to beat them to where they were going to end up anyhow. I was just going to arrive early. But how great is that? So after making up my mind, I put down my paintbrush, and I began to ready myself for my short journey. Just a nice, pleasant walk up to the Vincent Thomas Bridge and up on top so I could jump. But at that moment, a voice came in my head. Uh, it was kind of strange, and it was telling me that if you want to end your life, why don't you just give it to me? And I said, because I don't believe in you. Somehow, I guess, I knew this was God speaking to me. To this day, I don't know how I realized that. Then this voice speaking to my mind said, what have you got to lose? Well, I'd often use that phrase when I was selling people some drugs and so on. And, and now it was presented to me. What would I have to lose? 
So this time I reply, okay, I'll give you my life, but I'm only giving you two weeks to prove that you're real. In my mind, I was just committing suicide anyhow. I'm giving my life away, right? So then I'm going to be dead, right, if I don't have it. What did I have to lose? And as I was getting ready to give my life to God, uh, another voice came and spoke very clearly into my mind. Don't do this. If you do this, people will call you a Jesus freak. And I quickly replied, if people knew how messed up my brain is right now, they'd call me worse than that. And I was still on my knees from painting, and that was a good place to be. But that didn't matter to me. I just took my life, and I placed it in my hand, and I gave it a push upward. I just went kind of like this. And I stood there, and I watched my life float up and float up and float up into the heavenly until it just disappeared. I couldn't see it anymore. And I said, okay, God, you have my life now. My life is not my own anymore. And then I began to laugh. I was laughing quite heartily. I thought, well, if you're real, you sure got the raw end of this deal. What you got is as if someone took a garbage pail, emptied it, and whatever was left inside that didn't fall out, that's all that I am. And he said, I'll take it. So God took the deal. I had no knowledge of what I was doing at the time, but I have learned over the years that God has already given us the deal. He sent his only son to die in our place, and he has said, here's the deal. Whoever believes in Jesus shall be saved. The next step is ours. I was un unknowingly taking that next step of giving my life to God. God, he doesn't waste any time. I gave him two weeks. About two minutes went by, and I had an individual arrive in the room there that was kind of a, a little bit of a confrontational person. And since my brain was fried, I, I was not able to deal with pressure from a two-year-old. But as this person began to confront me, I felt a new power in me. I was able to stand my ground against this verbal attack, and I had not been able to do that since the last bad trip. I knew without a doubt that it wasn't me who was strong, but something in me had made me strong. I then told God, when that was over, I said, Okay, I believe you are real. Now I want you to show me who you are. I don't want any Mohammed. I don't want any Buddha. I don't want any Jesus. I don't want any middleman. Since you made me, you can show me who you are. It took me about a year of dabbling in philosophy, spiritualism. I worked some Ouija boards and some other senseless ideas before a man a couple of years younger than me was working with me in the shipyard. And he told me about Jesus. I had a lot of questions. And he answered everyone very satisfactorily. And he gave me a tiny new testament. Well, it couldn't have been much bigger than that. And uh, I didn't want it. I mean, it was all sweaty and dirty. And I, I was afraid to touch it, tell you the truth. But this guy kept persisting. You, this is, take this. So I finally didn't want to insult him, and I took it, and uh, he kind of shamed me into taking it. Uh, it was the blessing of my life. I went home and read it every night. And by the time I got to Romans chapter 8, verse 7 and 8, I knew I had to truly give my life to Jesus. Using the New Living Translation, it says, For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. I wanted to please God. I had to again, even though I'd given my life and threw it up to God, I didn't know who he, who he was. Now I knew Jesus Christ was Lord. Jesus Christ was the one that saved me from my sin. And Jesus Christ is the one I need to commit my life to. I'm no longer my own. 
some months later, I ran into the same young man and I thanked him for witnessing to me and giving me his little New Testament. I asked him how he knew the answers to my strange questions. And he told me, he says, he didn't have a clue what I was talking about. He just would pray and say, God, how do I answer this question? Well, that was my final confirmation that I needed. It wasn't him talking, it was God speaking to me all the time. Without a doubt in my mind, I knew it was Jesus had come and saved my soul. I've been learning about Jesus for over 50 years now, and I still can't get enough teaching to satisfy my soul. When I died to myself, Jesus gave me a new life in him. The old Rick has been passing away day by day as the Holy Spirit cleans him out of my life and fills me with his word, his knowledge, and his life. Suicide. If you face that choice in your life like I did, Jesus is going to be there. He's going to be asking you to give your life to him. What have you got to lose? It doesn't matter if you believe in him or not. If you don't want your life, Jesus wants it. You can destroy your life with suicide or give it away to the one who wants it. Jesus said he not only came to give life, but life more abundantly. So what have you got to lose? Choose life. Choose life. Choose life.